sofa6.co.uk. Sponsors of The Haze Out. <laughs> good, good. <coughs> good evening, oh ladies and gentlemen, um, and welcome along to what is going to be, hopefully, the Haze Hour. Um, those of you that are watching on video on demand, you might wonder why Dave and Dave here were splitting their sides as we came on. We've been talking Thomas Crapper and his invention in the pre-show prior to the real show and somebody's just... Chris mentioned that somebody had patented, I misheard when she said it's <laughs> patented the flushing toilet and I thought she said that in 1797 they'd patented, they'd painted the flushing toilet and somebody in chat suggested that that probably meant it was pebble dashed Hence the reason for collapse of stout That's really part. a good idea, you're having a pebble dash toilet. It's, <laughs> it's easily arranged with a carry and some peanuts. Innovative, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. carry and peanuts, that'll do it for you. Every time you care to look. Um, <coughs> yes, tonight, tonight will be air first. We've been building up to this for weeks, but tonight, drum roll. <laughs> tonight, Keith coils a squip. Keith Coyles, yes. Keith Coyles, a square. Let's have got it written down here. Kath's got a, a little baby weeny tiny female kind of thingy moddy thing to look at, called the Cool Fire One, which is rather nice. And Keith's got some knackered kit that we're going to do some doctoring on. So it's all going to be good. And that's in the here's hour. Assuming the titles work, shall we Shall we do it the usual way we do? It's all the good. usual way. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to... The Here's Hour! Hour. And we are live back in the room, which is all good. Now, you may recall that last week I spent some time looking at the cool fire too, which I'm going to give Keith to have a, a fondle. Have a fondle, Keith. And th this is the grenade look. It is out. tactile. Pardon? It is tactile. Oh, it's oh, definitely yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. Without any shadow of a doubt, it's definitely tactile. If you kind of swivel to your right a little bit, then folks, that's it. Folks can see what you're doing there now, you see. They'll see what you're playing with. And I know, Chris, you didn't like that at all, did you? No. So you've got the baby version, haven't you? The Cool Fire 1 in your hand. I've got the Cool, the dainty Cool Fire 1. Which, I mean, last week I, I slated that grenade lookalike. You did? Um, grenade, yes. And said it was, and not only didn't I, I not like what it represented, it... <laughs> It was very masculine, uh, whereas this, I don't feel is quite so bad. It's got a, a button rather than a bottom button, which you know I don't like. Mm -hmm. So it gets my seal of approval. However, I'm a little disappointed in the size of the battery. Um, there you go, folks. Yep. 16350? 18340. Eight. The writing's that small because the battery's that small. It's an 18340. Exactly the same size as in the Cool Fire 2. Right. So that's got the same size in. Mm hmm. Takes away from the macho a bit, doesn't it? Um, it, does, um, it does a little bit, yes. It does kind of uh, tiny weeny battery style. Mm hmm. This tank that comes with it um, is a bit airy for me, but 
there are two air holes at the top there one directly at the back and one immediately above the button and if i hold my finger over that mm -hmm. it tightens the drawer just a little bit which makes it acceptable for me um what i don't like and this isn't going to apply to an awful lot of people but it does apply to me i like the 12 second draw leaks <laughs> I don't know where you're getting the leak from, the leaks from the button. I heard the, the voice in the gallery. I'll come to that in a minute. When you... I like to press the button and sort of get it firing. Now, occasionally, it, it does take a while to fire up. It isn't instant. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, but that does occasionally happen. Um, so that 12 seconds sort of serves me beforehand and, you know, to get a decent draw. And it cuts out at 10. Which um, causes me to swear a little bit. Now, I've, this thing's definitely um, squint. Yes. I don't know whether the viewers can see it, but I, I certainly can here. Yeah. I've got to be honest, Chris, and see, I'm not sure whether that's the lines that go around aren't exactly parallel with the bottom or whether it is a bit squint. I'm not sure could what. Be. It could be either. Um, Keith said there it leaks. It does a little bit. Now, I haven't noticed it on this. I'll be quite honest. It seems to be quite dry in there. But Sav tried it today on the copper. And she did notice a bit of a leak. So whether that had anything to do with the copper's connection or what, I don't know. But it seems to be all right on this, I have to say. I'm getting dryness coming back here. Yes. But... Considering I've only had it 24 hours, it's already been and had to have a, a swill under the tap. Um, so I can report back on that. Go on, then I'll let you. Good. I mean, there was a, a juice in there that wasn't to my taste. And I mean, I'm a fussy so and so. So rather than put up with it, I got rid of it. Mm -hmm. And. I swilled the whole lot out, so it was soaking. Right, put it on a paper towel and stuck it on the radiator for an hour. And then refilled it after about an hour. Um, and I have, to, I have to be honest and say it's better. I'm enjoying it better. I'm getting more vapour out of it. Um, so I'm liking it better after I've cleaned it than before. So there you go. Um, that's <coughs> my opinion. I like the the fact it's got the air holes at the bottom. And I do like, um, I know this was something you warned me against, Dave, that the bottom bit is quite large. Yes. This piece here for screwing off and changing batteries. But I actually find that quite good for somebody who hasn't got the best grip oh you know? I, I mean from, from from the point of view of uh, the amount of, of grip it gives you that's that's brilliant but I think it was just a case of when I when I handed it over so you didn't actually hold the bottom and try and screw that way because you'd have been on all week mm. you kind of do that and it's kind of taking the whole bottom thing off that was all it was for um, I need to apologize to everybody for saying 18340 it is in fact an 18350 but you have to use unprotected ones uh, and the reason you have to use unprotected ones, here is a protected 18350 and it's way too long. It will not fit in either the Cool Fire 1 or the Cool Fire 2, which is worthy of note. How have you found battery life? in? Because it's not a mechanical mod, it's a regulated mod, so it, it, uh, it regulates the output voltage to 3.7. At 8.5 all the time, which yeah. is good for me. Um, to be fair... Dave, I have to say to you, I have not um, used it to its full capacity battery-wise because I didn't like the juice. Mm -hmm. So today when, you know, I got rid of the juice that was in it, no offence to your chosen juices, um, I decided <coughs> to give the battery just uh, another boost because it's the only one I had. Could, so I don't know how long the battery could Can I just last. go back to the leaking, Chris? Where was it leaking from? Right at the bottom, the connector, I believe. You see, this has been dried 
three times and it, it seems to me to be pouring out of the button. Right, hang on. Let me, I need to sort that bit out as no. well so that everybody knows that's got nothing whatever to do with what I've got on there. I had another device on it that dropped a whole load of crap into it. Ah, right. That's where that's coming from. It's not coming out of the, uh, the iClear 30. So I've just checked well, that. There's nothing coming out of the iClear see. 30. Yeah, I can see what's happening. Um, I have did have a little bit of a leakage from it. No, but I, I as would, I say, I've got none whatsoever on here. I would, I would, I would tell you what, 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 what the juice came, where it out of, but it was a present from a friend, and the friend's in the room. <laughs> well, not in the room. She's on Skype. I'm going to try it now with a tissue. It was a trunk. Me trunk? Me trunk, aye, that trunk you gave that us. That trunk it, leaked? Yep, yeah, it dumped everything. Dumped the lot straight, straight. I mean, it just literally was flooded and it's obviously got in behind the button. Right. But I, fine, I have, yeah. have to admit, um, generally speaking, I keep the button up and use my index finger on it so it wouldn't have leaked out on me. But if, you, well, if you've got a I'm bottom button, I'm holding mine just will. like that. One finger over an air hole and one over the button. And is <clears> it comfortable? <throat> Absolutely. Do I like the vape? Absolutely. But my juice is performing better than yours did. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 There's no nah. answer to that, Dawn. What? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> my juice is better than yours. Hey, I was just trying it. Janel256 or Dave Janel256 has asked does leaking depend on PGVG ratio I think the thinner the juice if it's going to leak the quicker it'll leak but what, what are you using in that Chris this is right let me see it's probably 60-40 to PG um, if anything it'll be A tad more VG heavy than I normally use. Right. Um, Burbars, Dave Burbars, has said, I found the 30B heads a bit hit and miss as far as draw is concerned. I would love to mm. say a little bit more what he means by that, or she means by that. Sorry, I'm not sure if... No, it's a... I found it very, very um, airy. Yes. Dreadfully airy. But... I've got to be fair here. Since I've given it a wash through, I don't know why that has made a difference, but that along with a different juice and just keeping a finger over that air hole, perfect for me. And I like a fairly tight draw. Oh, Probably I, a lot tighter than most people in here. I was going to say, let's be honest, the last when, oh, I forget what it was that came out. You said, this draw is perfect for me. Seriously, people. You need a bread poultice on the back of your neck to get a drought or something like what Cat likes it. She could suck a golf ball up a straw and not even break a sweat. <laughs> Ron is one of the luckiest blokes on the planet. <laughs> I think I'll do what uh, Disco Dare says and stick a bit of um, blue tack in the wall. Leanna Lawless has said the same thing. She always is, she always uses blue tack to tighten the draw. And I do remember going back. Oh Lord above, it must be. It must be over four years. There was a guy up in Scotland who used to do reviews. And can you remember there was a a nine or I think it was a nine or one had four mm. air holes on it. Yes. And he used to put he used to suggest that everybody put four um a bit of tape around three of the holes so yeah. you could get a less airy draw and uh, yes and dump kicks yes i did just say what you've typed into chat yes you did i did is that some kind of dial or is that just ornamental um this dial here the yeah that changes the wattage right so have a fiddle with it because it's set quite low at the minute when i was cleaning it down so, um, Mark's out of 10, Cat, for the, uh, the Cool Fire one? Um, Mark's out of 10, 8. 8 out of 10? 8 out of 10, and that's a good score from me. Uh, it only loses marks on the 10-second draw, 
um, and the fact that I do prefer a bigger battery. Yes, I think the, the, the battery size, well, if you, if you were the kind of person that could get through the day with an oh, ego. Oh, look at that, dear. You know what you're doing. Let's have a look. You don't see a hole anymore. And that's not blue tack. What is it? Aren't that clever? Oh, little silver stickies. Little ah. silver stickies? Way. And it shines like a little diamond <clears> in there. <throat> ah. Ah, it's perfectly happy now. Oh, dearie me, there we go. We've got a happy cat. Purr. Now, I've done something here because it's not. We switched it off. We switched it off. I'm up to nine out of ten now. That's it's on now. Oh, I didn't touch that. That's at twelve watts. There you go. You're good. Oh, yeah. He's gurgling like a good one. That's because the tank's nearly empty. Oh, yeah. That's one of the things that you will find with these, of course. Is that when the tank gets nearly empty, you do tend to get a bit, bit of a gurgle. You kind of can't really vape yes. them dry um, on 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 these iClear 30Bs. I have to say I quite like them. Um, I've not had much of, of a bother with them. Mine hasn't leaked. Um, as I say, what what leaked into the uh, into mm. the cool fire too was something entirely different. Um, but I do it's quite like them. Different, isn't it? Different. It is, yeah. yes, yes. Oh, it's, it's always a matter of taste and such. Now, I'm going to take the adverts a little bit early tonight, I think, Chris, because the bit that everybody's been waiting for is coming up after the first <laughs> ad break. <clears throat> this afternoon, Keith came round our house and sat down with tools, wick, wire and a scrape. And if you want to see that, you'll have to hang around. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. The Super6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Out. And we're back in the room, and uh, as I said earlier during the course of the day, Keith came round and rewicked a scrape. Would you like to see it, everybody? Are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> Here it comes. You'll enjoy this, and I'm not even going to say not a lot, but you will. You like this, and I think you like it a lot. Keith, doing coiling. So, Keith. Yes. Here for the first time. Yes. To have a blast. And the implements that you need 
are all in front of you on the table. Right. So let's just run really through impressive. them. Well, it is a bit. Um, first off, you're going to be recoiling a squip. So you'll need the wire. You'll need the squip deck, which is the grey thing in front of you. Yes. That's it. That's the deck. The next implement along is a screwdriver, but that screwdriver is what you're going to wind the wire around. Yes. Okay. Um, and it's, it's fairly easy to use. So that screwdriver that you have in your hand now is the former. You'll be winding it around the round blade of the screwdriver. Yes. Next along, you've got scissors. scissors yes. And that's what you'll use to cut the wire. The next along is the screwdriver for screwing the screws into the squip. Yes. Yeah. Finally, a pair of tweezers. Yes. And the tweezers we'll use when we put the wick in. Right. So let's make a start. And all you need to do is wind some of that wire, holding the loose end in your right hand it will be, and leave plenty of it. No, 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 it needs, you need, don't, no, no, not more, more than that, much more than that, that's it. Don't skimp on this stuff, it's very cheap. And you need to wind eight turns, very close turns. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lovely. Right, now, snug those right the way down to the handle using your nail. Yes. It'll hold now, you can take your finger off the coil and push it right the way down. So you're compacting it. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright. And now we're going to put it onto the scrape itself. So if you pull the scrape deck a little closer to you so you can see what you're doing. And lay the screwdriver along that groove between the two nuts. Right. And if you're going to find it easier, no, you, you need the coil between the two nuts. So let the coil move down the screwdriver. It won't spring off. That's it. And it might be easier if you snip the loose end that goes to the, um, the form of the coil. If you just snip that off a little. Give yourself a couple of inches to work with. No, no, you need longer than that. That's it, go on. So you've got it, that's it. Right, now if you can move, you can move the coil uh, of wire out the way, you're done with that now, it's finished with the white coil. That's it, lovely. And now you want to wind, just take that loose end that you've got and take it round the screw that's closest to you. Other way, so it comes up on the inside, that's it, as though you were following the thread. Yeah? Yes. And using the other screwdriver, you can screw that down. I'm not sure if caught, has it? Oh, I don't think it has. Right. And now, there's a, there's a secret to this. I'll loosen it again. Okay. All you need to do to make it a little bit easier, is pull that wire under the screwdriver. So make sure it's on the threads. And you can, you can probably leave go with your, uh, your right hand actually. But it wants to come round the threads under the screwdriver blade and that'll hold it in place while you screw it down. Yeah? No, it's not. I might need to loosen that bit more. Right, so come. Is it in? I think so. Right, hold that in place. 
and then tighten the screw down with your other hand if you can. It's just making sure that that wire is held in place. Has it got it? I think it might have. Good, good. And you're going to do the same on the other one. And again, go righty tighty, that's it. Lefty loosey. Right, you can definitely leave go with your right hand now. And hold the wire with your right hand. So it'll pull it tight. The other right. That's it. that seems to have caught so all you do now is pull now let's just you need to probably check that first one that you yeah it looks okay so the screwdriver that you used as your former you can just pull out gently that's it okay now that we've got those down and the screwdriver is out you can snip the loose ends right down to the screws as close to the screws as you can get yes being careful obviously not to damage the coil and of course scissors on a left-handed man yes oh they're effective the damn good ones they're right. uh, cornea scissors basically right having done that that's your coil made right now what we can do now is put the coil the whole assembly on a device and here is a device so if you unscrew the base of the squip from the uh, the platform that it's on right you take your lefty loosey that's it and screw it onto the the device okay now pick up the tweezers and when you press the button on the uh, the roller you'll see the coil will light up that's the first test and there it, it goes it works it works <laughs> okay leave go Right, holding the tweezers, if you do that again, this time when the when you take your finger off, yes. just tighten the coil in a little bit with the tweezers. Pull the coil from end to end so that it, it flattens it off a little bit. Do you mean push it? No, no. You would grab it between the tweezers. Right, like that. Yeah, but not while you've got the button pushed, otherwise it'll short the whole thing out. Right. And then just... Press it together slightly, just to just to, to, to firm it up a touch. Right, so there's the button on. Off, and then straight on with the tweezers, just to tighten it up a bit. Oh, don't push it down, don't push it down. Right. Okay, right, now you probably need to pull, pull that up a little bit. If you use the flat end screwdriver, you can slide it along the channel into the coil and lift it with that. Be very gentle with it. You go through the coil? Yes. Lovely. And just lift it up slightly. That's it. Now then, if we hold that steady, I'm going to try and zoom in on it. I'm not very good with that's as far as I can get. That looks from where I'm sitting. If you fire it up again, Keith. That's absolutely fine, I think. That's going to work. Okay. The next step is to get some wick in it yes yes and of course as you've seen before we've either got to roll that very tight yes in which case you'll want a little bit of juice in the sun to your right and just a little bit on the end if you hold it up between your fingers it's easier than trying to do it on the flat and just put a little bit of juice on it just enough to make it easy doesn't matter about any drippage, we'll sort that out later. 
not going to hurt you. Right. And then just roll that as tight as you can so you can thread it through that coil. How's that looking? That might fit. Right, this will be the tricky bit. Always is. Is it through? Yes, but I'm going to have to... Use the tweezers. Use the tweezers because I can't get it to go any further in. Yeah, I've, I've used tweezers for the same purpose in the past. If you can, there ah, you go. There we are. There you are. Right. Pull that through until you've got it all dry, and there's none of the the pre-wet stuff there. That's good. That's fine. That's fine. And then we're going to cut it off. But because this is a scrape, you want to cut it off flush with the two sides. Right. When you say the two sides of the of the inner of the channel, so up to the outside of the grey bit. In other words, here. Yeah. Oh. It's left-handed and scissors, isn't it? Okay. Now all you need to do, obviously, is pull the long end back a bit until it's level with the end. Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah, so back you pull the long way. end, yeah. That's lovely there. There's a black pair of scissors in front of you, Keith, that are not handed to your right. The black, that's it. You might find that easier to use for this next bit because obviously you don't want to pull it through. That's it. Much better. I forgot you were left-handed. <laughs> right. All right. Now we need to put some juice on there. Right. Give it a good soak. Make sure it's soaked into the cotton. So is the cotton all wet? Yes. That's lovely. Right. Let me give the button a push. And it's working. Hey, look at that. What? <laughs> Cracking, eh? Okay, leave it go. Lovely. Right, all that remains to do is to put the scrape back together. Okay, now that we know that that's working, we need to put the scrape base into the scrape itself. So if you unscrew it from the device, And then keeping the scrape top, the one in your right hand, in the orientation it's in, screw the deck that you've just coiled into it. A little bit of resistance is a good sign. Yes, it's not tightening if you know. Oh. It has now. That's it. Yeah. Right. Um, is it is it clean and there's no juice or spills or anything? Just, just give it a little wipe. Give right. your fingers That's a wipe. Right. And then we can uh, attach it back onto the roller. It and there's a mouthpiece in front of your right hand. The other right, that's it. Plug that in. Other way up. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. Oops. Whoops. That's it. And that should, in work. theory, work. So. Isn't that just amazing? You didn't think you could do that, did you? I didn't, no. 
I didn't think I had a hope in hell. Well, there you are. You've managed. I imagine the worst bit was the wire round the, the screwdriver, but that wasn't as bad as I thought. It'd... No. How long did that take, would not, you reckon? Not very long. I would think we've been on it maybe 10 minutes, and that's with shooting for edits. Working perfectly. Now, Keith, let's be, let's be absolutely honest about this. We stopped three times. That yes. was just for me to explain what the next stage was. Yes. We haven't shaken. No. You did that all yourself. Yes. There you go. I just wanted that right. on the record. And I certainly didn't expect to be able to do it, quite frankly. Do you reckon it's easy enough for people to do? Yes. Yes, I do. You're going to be buying yourself a squirt now? Well, <laughs> well um, yeah. I know yeah. somebody that's got one that doesn't like it. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> now I thought it would have been too intricate for me. Yeah, it's, about it's, that. it's easy enough. It was, yes. I, I suppose the worst bit was um, making sure that the wire was round before you screwed the... Yes. That, that was the the trickiest bit. Well, there you go. We'll talk about this more live in the studio, in the show. But Keith Herbert, welcome <laughs> to the world of the rebuildable atomizer. Yes. I think when Chris sees that, she'll be gobsmacked. So, are you gobsmacked, Chris? Of course I'm gobsmacked, but I'm not gobsmacked that he could do it, I knew he could do it. Um, but I'm just delighted that it worked first time for him, that's brilliant. Well done, Keith. Well, Thank you. Well done. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm here to tell you, I am actually vaping the coil that Keith built. And this thing is kicking it out. I've never built a better one myself, I don't think. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it. Huh? Right. Enjoy. Well, while you've been doing that, I, I've been inundated with messages from people who found an extension tube for the Cool Fire one. Have they? So, thank you uh, to two different marks who both let me know about that. Um, I'll make sure we get one. Excellent stuff. Mm-hmm. Excellent stuff. Um. What? Pretty soon Keith will be building coils and playing his organ at the same time. The mind boggles. It does indeed. So, go on then. How do you feel about that now that you've done it? Was it as hard as you thought it was going to be? It wasn't, no. But I mean, you know, remember you, you're talking to a guy that even found it difficult changing a, a fuse in a plug. But I, I was dreading doing it. But it wasn't, no. Uh, uh, I must say, when it succeeded, I got a great deal of satisfaction from it. Well, I've had a great, the, the, I've, I've had a <laughs> massive deal of satisfaction from it all afternoon uh, since uh, you did it. I kept thinking it forgotten. You no, know, the, no, no, no. Um, our chat <coughs> would not let me forget. Every week, Max <coughs> Hyde particularly is Keith doing the coiling this week. Well, is Keith doing the coiling this week? So there we go. All Vaping these gogs just logged on to say well done, Keith. All these complimentary comments. Yes. Really quite moving, that. It is a bit, isn't it? But there you go. There you go. As Keith himself said a few weeks ago, if he could do it, anybody can do it. Mm. So there you know. Um, Kizzy's saying, can you let us cool fire one owner's know as well, please, Cat? A link for wherever this <laughs> extension to you. I knew that would happen. I knew it would as well, yes. I'll give you that at the end of the show, I promise. So at the end of the show, that will go into chat, and, uh, and that'll all be good. We'd better take some adverts, and when we come back, Keith brought these round, um, because, well, you'd better say why. Yes. Well, now...
<laughs> well, after, <coughs> after. We'll do, we'll do right. it after the break, right? Um, but in a word, they buggered, or they'll pay it to be. So we're going to do a little bit of um, forensic analysis to find out why they're not working. And that'll be after the break. See you in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. And we're back in the room. We are back in the room. Um, and just reading through chat. And yes, apparently we actually have people in chat that don't yet do their own coils. Well, now you know how, if, if you find that you want to. Um, and it's all good, it's all good. Right, now then, Keith, <coughs> tell everybody what you brought <coughs> in and what I'll have the scrape back. Thank you very much. That's going right. nowhere with that coil in, I'm telling you. So what have you brought in and why? Right. Being a simple soul, uh, each night uh, I charge them up. Uh -huh. And um, one after the other, um, they stop charging. Um, and that, that, that was it, really. I, I was puzzled. I thought, oh, they must need new batteries. Right. Let's have a look at them then and see if we can work out what the crack is. We'll, uh, we'll go to close you up you can, put that lead out of the way, and look at this first one, which is, as you can see, an Ego Twist. Um, this will be a 1300 milliamp one, it's quite, quite long. And the first place I always look is down the end there to see what it looks like. And it looks a bit as though it could do with a clean. So that's first port of call. And delving into my little drawer, we come out with uh, baby lug pluggers. What do you, cotton buds, that's the thing. And all you need to do really, before you put your battery on charge, this is worthwhile for anybody as just general maintenance, is just wipe it through with a cotton bud. And you can see the crud that's coming off there, can't you? Yes. Um, because obviously there is no such thing as a leak proof tank there's no such thing as a leak proof atomizer it's a fact of the matter is if you can get juice in and you've got to get air in in order to be able to draw it then it's going to leak that's just a matter of fact and i'm afraid that's the way it is so a little clean will clean the contacts off and you can see how much crud <coughs> has come off on, on both ends of this cotton bud. You can also see now that there's a nice shine on that centre connector inside there, yeah? Yes. Um, somebody has pointed out in chat you can also use bog roll. You can. But I prefer to use cotton buds because I find if I'm using bog roll, I either put my finger, no, 
I'll put whatever it is I'm using to prod it in, I'll <coughs> put through it. That's the thing about bog roll. So it's worthwhile before you charge your battery, give it a good clean, give it a good wipe. It doesn't take much, it's only once a day, really. Um, and then that cleans it off. Now, so you should do that every time you always recharge it. Every time you're going to charge it, just give it a little clean. Doesn't take any doing. Right. Just give it a little clean. And you can see that button is lighting up. Right? So we know that there's some charging there. And I suppose really one of the next things we need to do maybe is uh, is try something on it and, and see whether or not the centre connector is at the right depth. So in order to do that, I will pick up a device of some sort. I'll use this. Might as well. It's a trunk. Screw that in. Give it a quick vape and see whether or not it's going to work. Mm -hmm. It does. So, given that the trunk itself, and I, I need to again show this, you'll see that the trunk has a slightly recessed centre pin, the middle bit. Mm -hmm. That means that the centre connector in the Ego is far enough up, so it's going to make proper connection. So, where's the other battery at? Let's have a look at this one and see whether there are any similarities. Now, if you have a look inside there, Keith, and you'll be able to see it easier on the screen. The phrase for that is minging. Yes, that's filthy, It's isn't filthy, it? it's disgusting, it's shocking. So again, that's going to need a clean because all of that crap in there will prevent electrons from moving about. The elastic trickery will fail. So I'm just going to give it as, as good a clean as I can. This may take more. Oh my God, look at that. You see, I just think these things go on and on, if you know what I mean. With a little bit <laughs> of, of daily maintenance, weekly even would do, but with a little bit of maintenance, you can keep these things running for years, probably. I mean, this one, this is a janty battery, and I know you've had this for a donkey's age, because I remember us getting them, and that must be two, two and a half years ago, wasn't oh, it, it, Chris? It, it, it will be. Because it's the, um, it's that long ago, I can't even remember what the device was called. So I'm just going to... Is gonna, it the Neo? No, yes, it couldn't have been. Yes, it was a Neo. Are you sure? Because the Neo was the auto battery. No, there was a manual battery as well, and this is one of them. Is that? Yeah. Right. Well, you see, what I, what I assumed was the length of time I'd had them and been using them, that it must be the battery. You would think, wouldn't you? <coughs> but apparently not. So again, I'll just give this a good clean because and again, let's try and see whether this will switch on or not. And that is as flat as the proverbial. It, it possibly has no charge in it at all. And if it's gotten to that stage where there's no charge in it at all, we might not be able to get charge in. But this is a known good charger that I've got here. And it's compatible with both of these devices because it is, in fact, a Joytech one. And since Joytech made both of these chargers, right, you can see that the light has gone red on this, which means that that janty battery is now charging. Okay. Right. And let's do the same. So that charge is no different to the one I use. No, this this is this is specifically it's a Joytech charge. It came with the Joytech batteries. These are both Joytech manufactured batteries, and they are now both charging with that charger. So, and you brought your charging lead round with you, didn't you? Yes. So let's have a look at that and examine it on camera. And there would appear to be the problem. If you have a look on screen, Keith, you'll be able to see it's oh. caked. The only... Right. That is absolutely caked. So again... Now, I would have never dreamt of looking at that. It wants cleaning. And it may be that it's gone past redemption. Well, I've got other ones. I just tend to use the same one. I think it's safe to say 
that as charges go, that one's had it. Right. I don't think it's going to be <clears> possible to get that. You see, that's the one. Absolutely, kit. I use all the time. Well, what, what's yeah. happening, you see, if they're not kept clean, the, uh, the build-up of the gunk, just, it just builds up and builds up, and you're, just not, you're never even going to get a contact. That has corroded to bits. Completely, totally and utterly corroded to bits. And I think, right. looking at it, I, I, I've got to say, for anybody watching, especially people that are new to it... That's um, disgusting, that, isn't it? Well, it's not good. Now, I don't think I'm going to be... Now, I could probably spend half an hour trying to get that cleaned up and sorted out. Um, pure alcohol might do it. Um, there are all kinds of solvents that you might try, but the problem is, of course, that there is an insulator in there this this lighter ring right is a an insulator and it's possible that you could dissolve that away and cause all manner of shorts i've got to be honest and say that really needs to be chucked i don't think we're going to be able to make it work um and to be honest i don't think it's worth trying it right uh, again this is this is a proper joy tech made one there's nothing, uh, you know, nothing wrong with the charger <coughs> per se, but the maintenance hasn't been carried out on it. As it happens, I have something like 20 Joytec chargers. So on that basis, I'll give you one of those charging leads. In fact, that charging lead there. And what we will do is put the spinner on to charge, the, uh, the twist rather, on to charge while we're sitting talking about it. And... Uh, and then that'll be fine. I'll just show that on camera. So I've put it on there, and you can see that's charging absolutely fine. Um, and we'll let the uh, the twist charge up first, and then we can put the janty one on a little bit later. See, I would have never thought of looking at the at the actual charger. It's yeah. <coughs> I'm just looking through chat there, and somebody said. You know, you could take it to bits and clean it with surgical spirit. I'm thinking now, I'm not talking about people who are electronically gifted and so on and so forth. I cannot advise anybody to do that, um, especially a beginner or somebody that's got no electronic or electrical knowledge. There's every possibility that you could do yourself and your house a damage, maybe. And it's not worth taking the chance. If you have access to wherever it is you bought your e-cig from, then it's a simple enough matter to go and buy another charging lead. But do buy the charging lead that matches the manufacturer of the, the Ego style battery or whatever it happens to be that you have bought. As I say, both of these devices are made by Joytech. That's a Joytech charger, so I have no problems with using that. I know that's going to work and work very well. But problems like that are avoidable by daily maintenance it's just mm -hmm. a case of giving things a little bit of a clean before you stick them on charge it doesn't take a couple of minutes and it's worthwhile doing it's a bit like keeping your tire pressure up to date and making sure there's petrol in the tank or diesel mm -hmm. in the tank and, and so on and so forth make it part of your daily routine and it isn't a problem so with with it, one like that what would have been the obvious symptoms if it had been the battery if it had been the battery that was dead yes if it had been the battery that was dead it just wouldn't take a charge um at all right um but in a situation where you've got the battery canister if you like and the charger you've got to look at both and try and work out which of the two is wrong this is why if i've often thought and i, I don't know whether you'd agree with this chris but I do think if you buy a starter kit, it's sometimes worthwhile buying two mm -hmm. so that you've got a spare of everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then if you're charging lead knackers, you've got a spare charging lead. If a battery appears to be knackered, you've got a spare battery. So you can always test. So you've got two identical. Yes. Would you agree, Chris? I would certainly agree. I mean, in my early days, um, I bought only 
Janty Products or Joy, Joytech. And in my case, I would buy a starter pack and a spare battery because you always got the charging need with the battery. Yes. So you had a spare charging need. And I think you need that, and especially with all the reports we're hearing of people who are putting e-cigs on charges and they're going ablaze and all this sort of stuff. You just can't be too careful. Yes, yes. I, I, I would agree. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, and people in chat are seeing this as well, if the battery was naff, it might have lasted a much shorter time between charges or being intermittent or so on and so forth. And Danf Keck says a good starter set always has at least two batteries, it does. And it's always worthwhile getting a second charging lead. And if you're using wall warts, get a second wall wart. Um, in fact, interesting point here. I use an iPad charger, the iPad wall wart. Yes. For USB charging. And I've got a four port USB that does two different... Um, Two different amperages, and I'll, 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 I haven't got time to go and get it now, but I'll mm -hmm. show you that next week. This is one that I bought from Amazon, and I've checked it out and tested it out and done all the scoping and everything on it, and it works perfectly. In mm -hmm. fact, next week, I shall write this down now in big letters, charges. Next week, we're going to talk yep. about charges. Whether they well, Lee has just sent me a PM saying, is it worth mentioning that just because a charger fits your battery, doesn't mean it will charge it safely. Oh, that, that's very, very true. It, it's, it's, it is. Now, in 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 an ideal world, a USB charger would be a USB charger, and the battery unit itself would take the five volts that USB puts out, and down convert that to whatever it needs in order to be able to charge the battery. The problem is, not all batteries are made the same, which is why I've said. Because both of these batteries, although one is badged Janty and the other is badged Joytech, they're both made by Joytech. And therefore, the Joytech charger, which is where I got it from, will work with both. It's, v it's very important, really, that you buy the charger that is supplied by the maker of the <coughs> battery that you use. It's not worth just chancing it you might as well buy the right one. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, if you're buying um, from a, a good maker, then the likelihood is that your, your charger will last longer, your battery will last longer. That, and that, that it kind of makes sense. You get what you pay for an awful lot of the time. Um, yeah, I think for new people, isn't it worthwhile to go to a vendor to begin with because they don't know the names and to go to a vendor that's got good reviews and a good standing and trust them mm. to supply you with the right things. Yes. That, when you're new, it's very difficult because they don't know about Janty or Joy, you know, so it's difficult for them. We do, we're experienced. People in chat there, a lot of them are experienced, they know what they're doing. But when you're brand new, it's very difficult. Absolutely right. Um, and somebody's just said, could it be said that a 500 milliamp charger will be universally okay? No. And I'll tell you for why. There are out there ego clones, ego style batteries, these, mm -hmm. this style of battery, this sort of thing, that look as though they ought to be the real I am, but they don't weigh enough. Or if they do weigh enough, it's, it's already been shown, if you've been on any of the forums, there are some of these that have got a tiny naff little battery in, no bigger than you would get in a cigar like, and it's weighed down with a couple of nails. God. And that is not going to take the same charging current as a proper Ego battery, a proper one that's properly made from a proper manufacturer. So no, you must buy the charger that suits the battery you have 99 times out of in fact 999 times out of a thousand you'll be fine it's that one time out of the thousand or the five thousand <coughs> or the fifty thousand or the million it's that one time and i just don't want it to be you that's the bottom line it's not can i just say what sabs um she's given me a comment from moonlit uh-huh 
um, gave something called a charger doctor on eBay, simple USB device which will measure current used from a USB port so that you can keep an eye on anything charging off USB. Interesting. It is, it is very much so. Um, the thing is, uh, again, I, I, I'm trying to kind of gear everything to folks that are newer yes. to the whole scene. And I think keeping it simple, it, it's dead easy. You cannot start a Ford with a Range Rover key. And you cannot start a Range Rover with a Ford key. Exactly the same with the batteries. If you've got a Joytech <coughs> battery, get a Joytech charger. If you've got a totally wicked battery, get a totally wicked charger. If you've got a an EVOD battery, get the EVOD charger. Get the charging lead from where you got your battery from. That way, if there's anything goes adrift, it's them to blame, not you. Likewise, never charge your batteries without you've given them a quick clean. Do the nappy change, clean its contacts, then do the charge. That way you'll never get the build up a crud. And seriously, as somebody did point out in chat, on that, that charging lead, you would get all kinds of conflicting signals and it, it's just not even worth trying to use it. It could, it, I'm not saying it would be dangerous, but it could be dangerous. And anything we can do to minimize risks can only be a good thing. Um, is there anything else Billy's <coughs> made the comment, um, please tell folk why a fireproof bag is a good idea. Um, I'm, I'm going to say I think fireproof bags are overkill. I really do. I think if you, if you keep everything in good condition and clean, then you're fine. Um, I charge my batteries overnight but I'm happy with the charges that I'm using and that's why I want to cover charges next week. Uh, going back a couple of years, and Chris will bear me out on this, some of the charges that were kicking about were, they were worse than dangerous. They vibrated and made a noise while you were using them. These days there are much better quality ones on the market and I would urge everybody to use that kind of thing and we'll talk about that next week. If you are, if you are that worried about your equipment that you think you need a fireproof bag then you need to be looking at the quality of your equipment and you need to be looking at charging more slowly and I, I think we really need to cover that next week because um, mm -hmm. I don't like I don't like finishing a show on a low. Um, Cornish has just said I am new to e-cigs and I thought Ego was a make so thanks for that. Just to confirm Ego is now a style. They were the Janty Ego, it was Janty that invented them, if you like. It was Joytech that made them. Go to close you up, you can. But it's now become a style. And this, this end here is known as an Ego connector. The 510 thread on the inside and the cone thread on the outside. And that's what you would call an Ego style battery. Um, and that's, that's the kind of the nomenclature we use. Um, anything more I need to cover on that, Chris? No, that's it. It's time to go home. <laughs> Time to go home. Oh, I certainly learned some stuff from that. Have you? Yes. That being useful. Uh, I, I mean, yes, cleaning the battery was one thing, but I must confess I would have never thought of cleaning the charger, hence the condition it's in. Yes. It's, uh, what? Joytech is owned by Belkin. I'll check that out, because I'm not sure about that at all. Anyway, yes. It, the time has come for us to go and so yeah. we say farewell. Hello. Um, we need to be awake. We've got to be awake because Kat's the boss and she's cracking the whip. Um, yet again, the hour has flown by almost <laughs> without notice. Um, I'm going to say congratulations on that coil, mate. I've enjoyed using that. That was, that was brilliant. Yes. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Marco at 9 and 9.45 for DE Talk, our German language programme. Wednesday, what are we doing Wednesday, Chris? Wednesday is Team Talk. Team Talk, that's and nice. <laughs> what we're going to talk about, I've no idea, because it's not a scripted show. Indeed. Then Thursday, I'll be back with Sav uh, for VT Talk. And I don't know what we're going to talk about, because that's, generally speaking, not a scripted show. 
Um, and then it rolls back round again to Sunday with Dave's Tackle Box when Dave Kitson will be back with us all. And there's RY4 Radio every night when we've finished too. And somebody will be getting really, really annoyed because I haven't finished. So until we see you the next time, vape on, vape hard, <laughs> nil carb run legitimus. And from all of us here, have a good night and take good care night. of each other. Good night, good night. everybody. Good night. Good night.